Hey, thanks for joining everybody. I'd like to do a couple of follow-up videos on the x Lite, and we're going to start by doing a Lua script tutorial. This is going to require you to do a couple of things, and it's probably not for your average user. We're going to be flashing a nightly build of OpenTX onto the transmitter. We're also going to be updating the SD card contents, and it's best that you start clean. It does use the QX7 structure, and, but I still, even if you already have a QX7, you should probably just start with a fresh SD card. And then we're also going to be copying over the Lua script files. But the end result is what I'm going to show you here right now. When we power on the transmitter, Welcome you're going to get MTX. this warning about having a nightly build and it's not safe to fly. That's probably true. But you can hit any button to bypass it. And then when you hit um, down on the little joystick, you hold down rather, you can see that the display one uh, comes up with the Lua script running. Now I'm going to put this down for a second. I'm going to plug in this quad. And we'll give it a second. There you go. You can see that we already have the PIDs showing up. Then we can navigate around to different screens and it'll populate with those values. When we're going over to, we're going to get over to VTX. Let's just change the channel. Uh, so I hit down, I clicked it. I can use the joystick to move around through the different channels. Uh, I'm gonna select channel two, press the joystick again. Then what you have to do is hold right on the joystick and you can click for save page. And now you can see that it's changed to channel two. You can hit this little button down here to exit out. And now what we're going to do is jump over to the screen so I can show you how to achieve this. One thing you're going to have to do prior to flashing this is get it into bootloader mode. With the uh, x Lite, you're going to hold down the D-pad here and then press the button and you'll see you enter bootloader mode. Then you just take your USB cable and plug it in and it should auto detect that we are in bootloader mode. Say USB connected. And now what we can do is bring up OpenTX and do all of our flashing. We should be good to go. Here, we're going to open up the Nightly Companion download screen. There's a link for this in the description. You're going to need to download the right version for your operating system. I'm currently on a Mac. So I click Mac OS X. I just went with the latest one, the uh, N615. So I download that, install it. If you already have a version installed, um, either uninstall it first or replace it with this one. And when you run it, you're going to end up here on this screen. The other thing that you want to do, even before you download and flash, honestly, is probably uh, back up any models that you've saved here. So you save radio backup to file, and then you save um, read radio firmware to file. I have already done that before. Um, but I, you know, there was nothing on there that I really cared about anyway, and it actually comes with a nightly build on it already. So I'm not too concerned about preserving its current state personally. What we're going to need to do is go into, uh, on a Mac, it's preferences, um, I, on windows, I'm sure it's called something similar. You're going to need to, uh, if this isn't set up yet before you, make sure you have your language set up correctly. Radio type is x -Lite. Um You do the no heli, that way you don't have that additional menu screen. I like to use this uh, font in particular. Uh, this font uh, removed some of the memory issues that I had in the past. Uh, I do Lua and Lua C. I think you only need Lua C. Um, that's like the pre-compiled one. If you just do the Lua, I believe it compiles it on the transmitter for you, which saves memory when it's running, but you can't access it through the scripts, um, screen as part of the model. Um, I'm not super familiar on that, but uh, anyway, if you have it set up like this, everything's going to work for you. This is where you can do a custom splash screen as well. I don't bother with any of that. The important part, though, is going over to application settings, and you want to do use nightly builds. And what that's going to enable you to do is when you go to download, download firmware, 
what it's going to do is pull, uh, it, see, mine says latest already. Yours will say um, maybe current and then latest, and it'll download. It'll ask you if you want to update when you click download. You can also hit check for updates just to see what's out there. Um, and then just save it. I'm going to replace it again because I already have it. It'll download it real quick for you. And then it says, do you want to write the firmware to the radio? If you started it in bootloader mode, like I showed you, and then plugged in the USB cable, this is where you want to press yes. And what it's going to do is flash it for you. It'll tell you it's done. You just uh, close out all these dialogues after that, and you can unplug the USB cable, and you'll be flashed to the latest version. So the other portion of this is getting the SD cards. So uh, there's another link. You want the nightly SD cards. Again, I mentioned that it uses the Tyrannus QX7. So this, that's this one. At the time of this video, the latest one is from May 10th. So you're going to want to download that zip file. I think I already have this here too. 110 megabytes. You want to unzip it. Then you're going to go, to go into there. Let's see if I already have it here. Yep, I do. Okay. So you want to go into it and go into sounds. And then there's going to be a bunch of other languages here. Delete the languages you're not going to use. You only need the language of your choosing. For me, that's English. And without the sounds, your Tyrannus is not going to speak to you. This is where you can do like the sound packs and things like that. The next thing we got to do is download the actual uh, compiled Lua script. So I'll have this link in the description for you. What I've done is simply downloaded the source from the repository, ran the build script, and then I compressed it and uploaded it for everyone to download so they don't have to go through that step. I probably won't keep this up forever, and I'm not going to be updating it either. So eventually there will be a new version released um, on the GitHub repo, and everyone will just be able to download it from there. So you're going to have this zip file that you've downloaded from uh, the Deadband website, and you open it up, and you have the beta flight directory and the scripts directory. What you're going to do is simply copy both of these over to the SD card on the Tyrannus. Now, if you pulled the USB um, out of the x light at this point and power cycled, and then plugged the USB back in, You'll have access to the SD card here under drivers. I'm going to do that now. Okay, so now that we have reconnected the USB and selected storage device on the transmitter, you're going to see these two devices have attached. You don't want the, to play with the Tyrannus one. That's the internal uh, memory of the transmitter. You want to go over to this no-name one, and that's your internal SD card. Um, you can see here, I've already copied over the contents of the SD card that we originally downloaded. Again, you go in there, you download it, you unzip it, you delete the sounds you don't want, and then you, um, copy it into your blank SD card. I'm going to recommend everyone just starts over for, uh, for an SD card. If you already have a QX7, you can probably just copy and replace. Uh, if you have an X9D and you're going to be using it, um, you're going to want to start over. This uh, SD card originally came out of uh, an X9D. So uh, you're not going to have the Betaflight uh, thing at this point. Uh, that's going to come from the other download that I showed you, where you go to the link from the description. The Deadband website has a direct a zip that you're downloading. And it's going to contain this. So you're going to copy the beta flight and the script directory over to no name and paste it right here into the root directory. That will give you this directory here. And then under scripts, it's going to ask you if you want to replace or merge. Um, you just want to merge them. And you should end up with something like this. Now, I think we can probably um, delete Horus and X9. Um, but I have a large SD card, so it doesn't really matter at that point. So now your SD card is going to be all set. The downside to doing it this way is that transmitting uh, all of this data 
through the USB, through the transmitter to the SD card is extremely slow. So the best way to do it is to power off the transmitter, pop the SD card out if it's already in there, and then plug the SD card into your computer um, using an adapter or whatever method you have and doing all, doing all of this copying locally. And then you can just eject it and plug it into the transmitter and you'll be good to go. It'll save you a whole bunch of time. Okay, now that we've flashed everything, got our SD card in there, we're going to boot it back up. Welcome Again, to you're still going to get this warning. And in order to get the Lewis script running on a particular model, you're going to want to go to page 12 of 12, hit down and screen one. Yours is going to say none. So when you select it, you start hitting up, you're eventually going to get the script. Once that happens, you click it. Now you can navigate to the right. And you'll see BF is an option. So select BF and then hit this button down here to exit out. And when you hold down, the Lewis script screen comes up. And that's all you need. So uh, assuming your quad is uh, returning telemetry, you should be all set here. Uh, the receiver is also going to have to have the right firmware on it, yada yada. But if you're watching this video, you probably already know what I'm talking about there. So thank you for tuning in. Um, please subscribe and comment on the video if you have any questions. Don't forget to check out the Deadband Show Wednesday nights and Saturday nights. Uh, occasionally we're doing Fridays as well. So check us out there. We're getting this new channel going, trying to move everybody over. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and I hope you have a good one.